Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, maximum candies allocated to K children. This is the type of problem where if you were able to solve it, you probably like it. If you weren't able to solve it, you're probably gonna hate it even after you see uh, what the solution is because it's one of those where it's like, it seems like it could be solved like several different ways and maybe there are multiple like solutions to this one, but it, in a way it kind of leads you down the wrong track. Now. Of course, I'm gonna explain like how to approach this problem, try to explain the intuition, go through a dry run, go through the complexity analysis, and then we'll code it up. But people always ask, what's your thought process, neat code? Like, what was your actual thought process? But what if you can't handle my thought process? Well, I'll show it to you right now. I've been making comments to like explicitly have my thought process written down. And sometimes this kind of helps me approach the problem. For easier problems, it's kind of a hurdle, but I do it anyways. So first let me just read the problem to you and then I'll show you my thought process and then we'll just get into the solution. The idea is we're given an array, I believe of positive integers. And so we could have one that looks like this five, eight, six. And then we're also given a parameter K. In this case, it's three. The idea is we want to take this array and we're allowed to take any of these numbers and split it. We could split it any way. Like when you say split, it doesn't mean divide it by two, like divide this into four and four. We could split it anyway. We could have eight different ones, or maybe we could have four different twos, or maybe we could have like a combination. We could have a three and a five. Already for me, this is seeming kind of complicated. Now what we want to do is have at least K integers. So we want to divide things up such that we have at least k integers. Right now we already have k integers and we can have more than k integers as well. But what we want to do is then among those, we want to pick the k largest integers. So if we had a bunch of integers, we just want k. So in this case, we just want one, two, three of those. And we want to pick the largest ones because we want to give a pile to each kid. And I guess when I said we want to pick the k largest, it's a little bit misleading because we want all K kids to be able to have the same number of candy. So we want to have K different piles that are equal. And what we want to do is try to make those K piles maximal because that's what we're trying to do. Give each kid an equal amount of candy and the maximum possible amount of candy. And we're only allowed to take these integers and split them up. We are not allowed to merge integers together. So you can't like take multiple piles and then combine them. So knowing that one of the first things that I thought of was, well, if we already have K piles, why would we ever want to split it up into more piles? Maybe like that's a case where we don't actually need to do anything. Maybe that's when we can stop uh, searching or stop uh, splitting things up. But that's actually not the case. Let me give you an example. What if I had a one, a hundred, and a hundred? Well, if I take one of these a hundreds and I split it up into 50 and 50, now I have uh, this pile over here, which I can also split into 50 and 50. And then I'll end up with three, at least three piles that are equal and they are each 50. I believe that's the result for this example if K was equal to three. So it's not true that as soon as you have K piles, you can stop because if you could, well then it would be pretty easy. You could just take the minimum value among all these five because we know that any other pile can be split up such that it can be turned into a five and then some other remaining uh, integer, but that's not possible in this case. The other example shows something that's kind of interesting. This edge case is a, uh, kind of a shortcut. What if we had like a two and a seven and K is equal to uh, I think 12 or something. Well, in this example, the total sum of the candies is only nine. We can't split it up into K different positive piles. So therefore, like even though we can have nine different piles of one, we don't have 12 piles. So the minimum value from that is kind of zero. So the maximum that every child can get is gonna be zero. Okay, now let me kind of just show you really quickly what my real thought process was uh, when approaching this problem. So like these are the notes that I took. Sometimes I take these to help me solve a problem. Sometimes I take these for easy problems just so that I can have some steps that I can explain uh, in the drawing explanation of these videos. Um, but you can see I kind of covered like this stuff already. Um, and th th this was my thought process. I didn't always write it from top to bottom. 
but uh, this was what I wrote down. We need at least K piles. If we have K piles, how do we know we have an answer? How do we know when we can stop splitting? Well, I thought, well, maybe we can compare the minimum and half of the maximum. I went down the wrong track thinking of this because I thought we could take every max pile and divide it by two, but that's not always going to be the case. For example, consider this, like this counter example. I didn't write it down here because I just thought of it in my head, but I'll show it to you. I'll type it out. Imagine we have something like this. I have a 60 and a 60 and K in that example is equal to six. We need six piles and I assumed that we would take maximum piles and divide them by two, but in this example, that's not the case. We take this max pile, divide it by three. We get three piles of 20, and we do the same thing with this guy. We get three piles of 20. So this is just to show we can't divide the max piles by two and expect to arrive at the correct answer. I went down that line of thinking. I thought, okay, well, the minimum is never really increasing because we can't merge piles, but the max is decreasing. Maybe a priority queue will help us. And then I realized, but we only care about uh, the biggest k piles so we don't actually need to keep track of the minimum we only need to keep track of k piles somehow we have to remove the minimum and then i realized wait we aren't always going to be dividing by two and so then i realized well this priority queue solution maybe it's possible to make it work but it sounds pretty damn complicated so i'm going to try something else for a second and then how did i know that maybe a binary search solution would work on this because i hadn't even thought of what the brute force solution was well, part of it is just intuition. I've solved problems like these. When you get really stuck on something like this, I realized that there was a search space for this solution. And that's why I thought, okay, it is possible probably to implement binary search as long as I can figure out what the brute force solution would be. And then I was able to do that. And I won't show you the code of it right now because I want to draw this out for you. So now I'm going to get into kind of the intuition behind the binary search solution. And if you're wondering, again, like, how do I know that it's binary search? How would you be able to figure that out on your own? Honestly, I don't have great advice. The main thing to do is just practice. The reason I knew was mainly due to intuition. I've solved problems like these before. And let me show you a few problems that you can practice if you want to uh, learn this pattern and how it applies to a problem like this one. You can go uh, to the Neat Code 150 or 250, it doesn't really matter, um, and go to the binary search selection or section. And the main problem to practice this would be this one, Coco eating bananas. That's like the most famous uh, example that I can think of. But there is another one. If I go to the neat code all, maybe I can show you. And if I go to binary search, uh, there's this problem, capacity to ship uh, packages. It's pretty much identical to this problem, like conceptually. I'm not sure if this one is or not, but I know that these two are pretty much the exact same as today's problem. Okay, so now let's actually get into it. So the first thing I want you to recognize is that if the sum of everything here is less than K, well then the answer, the result has to be zero because we don't even have enough to give each kid one candy. We don't even have enough of that. So we have to return zero. Okay, now if that's not the case, then I know, okay, what is my search space? Like the solution, I have to think, what is the minimum and maximum value it could be? Well, the minimum is kind of easy. It probably isn't going to be zero. We already determined that. The minimum it could possibly be is one. But what's the maximum it could possibly be? Take a second to think about it. It's basically a math problem. Well, in the best case scenario, without trying to do anything intelligent on this array, the best case scenario is that we could take the entire sum and divide it evenly among all kids. It might not be possible depending on like what these values are, but that's the best case scenario. The sum divided by K, that's the maximum value. So that's what I'm going to put over here. So this is our search space. So if it's possible that we could figure out a way to run binary search on here, then we'd be able to solve this problem in uh, the sum of the input array divided by k. So that's like our n value. And if that's n, then our time complexity would be n log n. Now, why do I put the n there? Because binary search usually just takes log n time. Well, to verify if an answer is correct or not, that's going to be along the lines of the brute force solution. That's why I kind of mentioned that. 
And again, how did I know that? Well, I've just seen this pattern before. It's just a pattern. I didn't like invent this pattern. I learned it just like you you might be learning it today from watching me. But now let me kind of show you. So this is our search space. If we were running binary search on here, we would set this as our left boundary and this as our right boundary. And then we would calculate the middle and then we would verify if that works or not. And what are we doing by doing that? If I calculate the midpoint of here, I'm saying that that's my candidate. I'm saying that whatever that mid value happens to be, this is the number of candies that we can give each child. So how do I confirm if that's actually possible to give each child this much candy or not? Well, that's going to require just scanning through the input array. And it's not super difficult. It's pretty much a brute force solution at this point. That's why I feel like sometimes these problems are frustrating because once you know the pattern, I mean, it's pretty trivial. When you don't know the pattern, pretty hard to come up with this. Think of the problem in this way. If I gave you uh, this array and I said, I want to have K equal piles of candy. And I said, is it possible to have, let's say four candy for each kid? given this array, how would you determine that? Well, you would ask yourself, what's the maximum number of piles of four I could create out of this array? And is that the maximum number of different piles at least as big as K? So uh, for example, I would say, uh, let me actually just start the dry run at this point, because I think then it'll make a lot of sense. So we know our minimum is one in this case. The sum of this is 13 plus six, and then we divide it by three. So 19 over six, and let's round down because we know we can't give any kid a fraction of a candy. That doesn't make sense. So let's round down. This will be six. So I'm gonna put a six over here. And now I'm gonna calculate the midway point between these. So one plus six divided by two, that's gonna be, let's round down, it's gonna be three. So let's try three. And I think in this example, three actually is the solution. Or actually, I think for this example, it's not. I was going to try a different example, but let's stick with three for right now. So I'm going to have my mid value be three. That's kind of my candidate right now. You could think of this like this. This is how you can visualize it. I have an array going from one uh, all the way up until six. This is my max. This is my uh, min. And so now this was the middle value I got. It's three. So that's the candidate I'm looking at. M equals three. And now I'm going to check what's the max number of piles I can get of size three. I'm going to go through here. Okay, I have five. I can only create one pile out of five because I can't divide it by two. If I try to, I'll get a three and a two. That's the best I can do. And that is not satisfactory. So we could only get one pile of three out of this guy. Okay, well, what about eight? Well, with eight, I can get three and a three and then a two, so we don't care about that. Now, what am I doing by doing this splitting? It's a very simple math operation. I'm just taking eight and dividing it by three, by the value that we have. And that tells me when we round down that we have two piles. So these are the two piles. This one doesn't count, it's the remainder. So out of this guy, I can get two piles. So one pile from him, two piles here, and then with the six, we can divide it by two, we get two piles. Okay, I get five total piles of size three from this array. I only needed three piles. I have five piles, so that's good. So I know that at the very least, I can get three piles. So what am I gonna do in my binary search? Well, we're trying to maximize the answer. So now I'm gonna say, okay, my result for now is gonna be three, but now I'm gonna cross everything out over here. I'm gonna take my left pointer that was over there, my minimum value, I'm gonna shift it all the way to mid, plus one, which is over here. So now I'm doing this. So you could kind of think of it like that. My mid is over here. Well, that's not where my mid is, sorry. My left is over there, my right is over here. And I'm gonna kind of do the same thing. Now I'm gonna calculate the midway point. I get five. I'm gonna see, can I create at least three piles of five? Okay, with this guy, I can create one pile. With this guy, I can create one pile. Eight divided by five is gonna round down to one. And then same here, I can get one pile. I get three piles. Okay, so five is also satisfactory. So far, that's the largest number that we've seen. So what I'm gonna do now is take my left pointer and shift it. This is where mid was. I'm gonna shift it to mid plus one. It's gonna be over here now. So now my left and right pointer have converged. So we're almost done. We just wanna know, is this also valid? And we'll check. So mid is equal to six. With this, I can't get a pile of six. I can't. And with eight, I can get a one pile. Sorry, I should put a zero here. With eight, I can get one pile. With six, I can get one pile. So I only counted two piles. 
that's not enough. So this one is actually not valid. So the largest one that we found that was valid was five, and that's how you solve the problem. I think that's pretty much enough for us to start coding it up. I don't think I need to run another example, but I encourage you to do that. You can even look at the code that I code up. It's pretty easy code to read. So if you want to run this on another example, try running my code on this array, but maybe change K to five or maybe add another element here, maybe add a four. Just try something slightly different. Try to do the dry run. See if you arrive at the correct solution. You can edit your custom test case on leak code just to see what the correct answer actually is. And I really think taking at least like a couple minutes to do that will be really, really good for you in the long run. But anyways, you can see that for each time we're scanning through the array, so that's going to be, I think, O of N. And the other term, the log term, was the sum of candies. And that's divided by K. So I don't know like how to simplify this term. Maybe, I think depending on the constraints, this might be proportional to N. But I think this is like the precise time complexity. Maybe there is a way to simplify it. Okay, so let's first just start with like that edge case where the sum of the candies is less than K. And of course, like taking the sum is going to be a linear time operation. So maybe it's best that we put it in a variable. So let's just call it total. And then let's do that because we're actually going to be needing this in the next calculation as well. So that's not really an optimization in terms of the big O time complexity, but it's still better to do that, just kind of a minor thing. And if that, this is the case, then we return zero. We know that we can't give any child any candy. Um, otherwise, we'll have a couple of pointers, and this is for our binary search. We'll start at one, and we'll start at the sum of candies, and then divide that by K, and then we'll do the binary search. This is how I like to do it. Um, let's just initialize our result. It doesn't really matter what we initialize the result to. I'll, I'll talk about that why in a second. Um, but then I'm going to have my uh, binary search let, while left and right have not crossed each other. I'm going to calculate my midway point, left plus right, divided by two. And then I'm going to do the sort of brute force thing. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to go through every candy in the input. And for each candy, I'm going to check if this candy is greater than or equal to our mid value, then we know we can create at least one pile out of this candy that we can give to a kid because we're trying to create piles of this much. And if that's the case, I want to know how many piles I could create. Well, that's going to be C divided by M, like integer division. We're not taking any remainder or anything like that, no fractions. And so this is what I want to add, not to the result, but to my count. I'm counting how many piles I can create with this candidate, with this amount in each pile. And so that's what I'm going to add to count. Now, if I ever get to a point where the total number of piles is greater than or equal to K, I can probably break. I don't need to put this here, but it's a minor optimization because we don't really need to keep scanning at that point. And so then after this loop is done, I want to know, is the count greater than or equal to K? If that's the case, then I just found a new value that does work like we know that the solution is between one through this number we know that this is going to execute at some point we know we can give each child at least more than zero so this should execute and then we'll set the result equal to that value and then we will update our search space by shifting our left pointer to be mid plus one so that now we can look for larger values where possibly uh, this is the case where we can give each kid at least this much, where our number of piles is greater than or equal to K. And otherwise, if that's not the case, well, then we have to look for a smaller answer. We will set right equal to mid minus one. And then at the end, we will just return the result that we computed. You can see the entire code here. It doesn't look super crazy. As long as you know a decent amount of binary search, as long as you know like how this brute force code is working, and as long as you know like how to set this up, problems like this aren't super difficult. It's more about recognizing when to apply it. So I, I've ran the code. You can see here it works. It's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, definitely check out Neatcode.io for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.